Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of Weed Buds Radio. I'm really excited for this episode because it's not every day that we get to have other podcast hosts on the show. And I'm really excited to have Mary Jane Baker and Timmy Boyle join us today. Both of you, thank you so much for coming. No, right, no problem. We had uh, nothing planned for the next three weeks. So this fills up our schedule nicely. Um, amazing. Well, I have to say, Tammy, I'm really interested in your background because I grew up with two Episcopal ministers for grandparents. And okay. when I had to come out of the cannabis closet, it was a big kind of uh, production. I took the, all of my grandparents out to breakfast and I had a conversation of, I started this little show it's starting to get some attention. And before it gets any more, I need to come clean. And it was hilarious because they both had embraced it so much. My grandmother was using the products. My grandfather was using products for his cancer treatments. And it turned into quite a beautiful conversation. And so I'm curious if you, would you mind sharing a little bit of your origin story of where you came from and what brought you into this uh, journey? into podcasting about cannabis. Sure. Yeah. Uh, can I just throw back one initial question to you? So you didn't know they were using secretly. Is that right? So I had known that my grandmother was using CBD, but I had no idea that either one of them were using any sort of THC products. Right. Well, I can tell you that's, it's, it's something that I've realized over the last few years, because I grew up in a, a, a I would say a, a fairly conservative Baptist church, um, like literally born in a pew. My mom denies that, but I think it's just because it's an awkward way to give birth. But um, I was I was there in the same church for 30 years. Um, I was the golden child, um, no smoking, no drinking, no sex before marriage. I did a little dancing, a little roller skating, but I did that on the down low. But uh, and, and certainly weed was... Um, or the can, uh, the devil's lettuce um, is the yes. way that I was referred to. It was not only was it um, linked in with you know every other um, drug, you know, like you just don't go there. But it wasn't even brought up. It's not like we even talked about, hey, here's why you shouldn't use it, or here's what it's about. So it was a um, it was as far away from my mind. I didn't know anybody who used it. I didn't. Uh, we didn't talk about it. Um, it wasn't anywhere there. But as I've gotten older and as I look back, I think what you experience, I, I'm i finding there are so many users, especially older generation, where it was even more, especially in the church, where it was back in those days, it was show up in a suit and tie. You had your church reality and your home reality um, just out of cultural necessity. And um, I'm finding there's a way, way more people that were probably using it secretly while I was growing up thinking that it was a no, no, no. And nope. But because no one talked about it, um, everybody just kept it hidden. And I think that's an incredible shame. So I'm coming into this world completely and utterly blind. Um, and I wouldn't be here right now. I don't think with, without meeting Mary Jane, Mary Jane opened up that door. Um, but, uh, very conservative roots. Um, those, those ideas, um, we're breaking down before I met Mary Jane and Mary Jane just kind of, uh, you know, put another big kick in there um, and opened my eyes to some uh, some misinformation and non-information that I had had. Sure. And now, Mary Jane, I let same question. You know, what was your first experience? What was your origin story with cannabis? Oh, OK. Um, so that goes back many, many, many years. I don't want to say how many because I don't want to age myself. Um, however, I was a teenager and, uh, somebody had said, you know, do you want to come smoke a joint? And I was like, oh, that's bad. That's, that's like, that's weed. That's marijuana. I'm not going to do that. And, um, I actually went home and I had a discussion with my dad because we were very open, very honest. And, um, I knew he consumed from when I was younger because in school they teach you like Timmy is saying, cannabis is lumped in with cocaine and heroin and all the other nasty drugs. Um, so when I had found out that my dad was using at a young age, 
uh, I was very angry with him. How could he do something that was so bad that could get him thrown in jail? And when he explained it to me that it was like alcohol, I kind of had a different perception. I was like, okay, if people can drink and still function, then it would be okay. So he lived by the, it's not what you do. It's what you do when you do what you do Mm -hmm. method. So when I went to him as a teenager and we had the discussion about cannabis, he said, I'll tell you what, you want to try it? We'll try it together in a safe environment. So you know what you're getting. You don't have to get it from who knows, you know, where or God knows what. Um, and it that that was my door into cannabis, um, which is funny because when my mom found out that I, I had smoked with my dad, she got mad, told me, get in the car. I was like, oh, my God, what's going on? Where are we going? She drives down a dirt road, pulls over says, pass me the pack of smokes from under the seat. And I'm like shaking. I have no idea. I'm like 16 years old. No idea what's going on. Reach under the seat, pass her the pack of cigarettes. She says, the bag too. So I reached under the seat and I pulled out a bag of weed. And the look on my face as I looked at my mom who had flipped over the pack of smokes to reveal it was a pipe. She made a pipe out of a pack of smoke. She was like, well, give it to me. And I was like, so it was the realization that everybody that I know might just actually be consuming cannabis and I might not know it, you know? And my dad was like, doctors, lawyers, teachers, they, you know, they do it, but they can't say that they do it. So I was always like confused as to how something that made me feel so good could be illegal and be wrong. Sure. So that, that was my entrance, we'll say, into cannabis was, Amazing. it was well, guided. <laughs> well, and I, that's, I think, a really powerful way to be introduced to cannabis. I was sharing a little while back, my, my first experience, uh, I was lucky to have such good friends around me because I was listening to my heartbeat and, uh, you know, it was, it was just surreal. It was not something that I grew up with either and being surrounded by the right people. And I think making you feel safe makes all of the difference. And I'm curious, you know, Timmy, you know, growing up, uh, in the background that you did with the church, I mean, do you, do you consume cannabis today? No, no, I don't actually, which surprises uh, a lot of people. Not only are we doing the podcast, the newbie and the doobie together, because me still remaining the doobie or the newbie, (laughs) which actually, if strictly from business standpoint, if I ever started to consume, there goes our name. What's the point? What's the point of the newbie and the doobie? So I, you know, I have to try something new. (laughs) Even if I wanted to try now, we're locked into this long term. So, you know, I can't lose the designation or we got to change our name and branding. And that's just too much money and effort. So um, you did try it, though. I did. I did try it. So um, I got into this phase of life where I was like, um, I want to try new things. I had I had, you know, broken free from a lot of the stigmas that have been set up through through a deeply religious growing up. And like I said, a lot of those stigmas and and misinformation and non-information, I don't even think most of it was um, this intentional like thing of like, don't. It was just um, it was just non-existent. It was almost it's it's it was so not in the thing. It it was just non-existent. And so. I don't blame anybody necessarily for that, but I realized that there were these thought processes in my head. Some of it pop culture driven. Um, you, you know, you there's a very, very clear perception of what a stoner is and what we would do to somebody. Pop culture has probably done a disservice um, to the cannabis consuming uh, world um, based on how those who don't smoke perceive it. But I was willing to try new things. I'd come into a new, new stage of life and it was right before kind of I had, I had met Mary Jane. And so she, when she heard that I had never, ever consumed cannabis, I believe her words were enter Mary Jane. She could, she couldn't believe it. She jumped right in. So she set me up with my, my very first smoking joint experience, 
which I was severely disappointed at because I had seen all the movies and, and stuff and, and I felt nothing. And I was like, well, why am I trying something that gives me nothing? Like, so that, that was a, it was a downer for me. And so she said, well, that's okay. I, I gave you a really low dose. So she, she gave me a second one. We, we went on a bowling date and she upped my THC. This is, this is stuff I'm learning in hindsight. This is what she did. She upped my THC and I'm a good bowler, like 300 bowler a few times in five pin. Like I, 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 I take my bowling game serious and my bowling game dramatically fell. And I realized right then and there, it's like, look, some things aren't worth risking. So I was already on my way out of the cannabis smoking world at that point. I'm like, I can't have my bowling game drop. And so I try, th I always try things in threes. Three is an important number to me. I always feel that you need to watch a TV show three episodes in, listen to a podcast three episodes in, try to get a feel for what's going on. So I tried it a third time. We were sitting down um, at her house and whatever she gave me made me blank out multiple times through our conversation. It was, and it was about 25, 26% THC. Which apparently now I found out is incredibly high for, for especially a, a, a newbie. And I, um, being a cerebral person and somebody who grew up not just religiously, but just in my own, my own life, always wanting to be of sound mind. I was very, I was very like intellectually cerebral based. And the fact that I couldn't keep track of this conversation, uh, freaked me out. And I didn't like the feeling of not, of being disconnected like that. And so that was my last time. So it was three times over a span of, I don't know, a couple of weeks or whatever. And then I, uh, I handed it all over and said, I've been there, done that, but I'd still like to talk about it. So yeah. I just want to add the time that we went bowling, uh, he said it was the second time that he consumed, which is true, but because he felt nothing the first time he smoked two joints in oh. a row, in a row before going bowling, which is probably why he felt the way he did. And when you had smoked the 25, 26% THC, I put on a movie, which is the appropriate thing to do when you smoke that high THC and just chill and watch the movie. But of course, me being me, <laughs> I started doing this. And you can't talk to somebody who's that high when all they want it, they need to just chill and relax. So I kind of set them up for a, a poor experience on that one. So well, and Mary Jane, I know that you have much more experience with cannabis than Timmy does. Yes. How, do, how does cannabis play a uh, role in your life today? Okay, um, I would say cannabis is what gets me through every day. Um, I, I've learned to, um, to use it instead of letting it use me because there are times when I just want to smoke a joint for the sake of smoking a joint. But then there are other times that I need to smoke a joint because my, my, of my anxiety levels or whatnot. So um, yeah, cannabis is pretty much in anything and everything that I do, whether I'm eating it or, you know, I like to make bath salts and infuse my bath salts and I've even painted with it and like cannabis oil and, yeah. No, you painted with cannabis. <laughs> yes. So um, I do um, a type of painting that's called paint pouring. Um, it's where you take the paint and you put it in a cup and basically you just like dump it all over a canvas and it does this amazing stuff. Um, but you can add a little bit of cannabis oil, uh, the MCT oil into the actual paint and mix it up and it'll give you these nice cells, nice big globs. It's, it's beautiful. That's really cool. I can't wait to see an image of that. Oh, that's good. I should probably have one around here somewhere. <laughs> well, I'm curious, what is it like for both of you? I feel like talking to different couples all of the time, either neither one smokes or consumes in any way, or both of them consume. What is it like being a newbie and a doobie? Uh, what it, how, how does that work? So, so I foolishly thought that when we met, I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. I'm going to introduce him to cannabis and, you know, Bob's your uncle. I'm going to have a cannabis consuming partner. And I don't uh, even know a Bob. He's your uncle. <laughs> and lo, and, <laughs> lo and behold, um, I mean, he, he doesn't consume, right. which I'm not really complaining about because 
That just means there's more for me and I don't have to share. <laughs> but um, I'm like a cannabis smoker's dream, right? It's yeah. like, wait, I don't have to share anything with you. Yeah, exactly. And I've always I've always got a driver. Yeah. Right. You can always take me anywhere I want to go. Pizza <laughs> one in the morning. No. <laughs> Well, is, is it, is it hard at all? Are there any challenges? Because I know like some couples, I, they hate the smell of it or whatnot. And Timmy, yeah. like you, you seem like it doesn't really phase you and you host a podcast show about it. Yeah. You know, um, I, I think what I've discovered is, is how incredibly rare. And like I say, discovering is kind of a, um, a journey thing as opposed to a light went on thing, but I'm discovering that our relationship is incredibly rare. Um, and it, through conversations with Mary Jane, it's, it, it, it is, I think it's because of that. It's like, you know, you, you want to have that common shared, shared experience. If we're at, if we're at a, a party and MJ goes for a smoke, most couples be like, well, let's go take our smoke break. And, and, and it has that kind of common kind of thing. Or MJ was talking earlier to me about, you know, uh, you know, golfing or, or, Ex weight weightlifting, right? You know, if your spouse is, is sharing that love, which for MJ, you know, cannabis is, is such an, a, a strong part of her life, you would assume that that other person should share in that or else it's going to cause a, um, a friction. But what, we, what we've talked about is that anything can cause that friction, right? Like if, if you're not in constant communication, um, you know, if, if somebody loves baseball and the other person doesn't, that could be just as dividing as, as this. And I think it comes down to communication. We, we talked very early on, um, you know, that, uh, yeah, I was willing to try it. Um, and when I decided that I wasn't going to do it anymore, it was a conversation piece. It wasn't like I started to put a wall up. It wasn't like I started to kind of, we've, we've talked about it the entire time. And I think what surprises a lot of people is the fact that we are able to not only, um, relationally um be together but to work together on the on this thing and i actually think it's those differences that that have become a strength as opposed to a weakness and some people would think that it might be the other way around i can honestly tell you that it it's still if we're sitting down and for some reason it's kind of like it's kind of like you know when you're playing a board game and it's one small spot in the entire floor but your cat finds the board game to go lie on when she's sitting beside me smoking, I still do, um, you know, the smoke tends to always, no matter which way she blows it, blows towards my face. And I can honestly say I still kind of like do the, huh. but it's a joke now. And I don't, you know, it's not a, it's not a completely negative thing. And I'm, I'm actually on, on the side of, I don't believe secondhand smoke is a real thing. I think we're, we're actually going to do a, uh, a test of that shortly to find out whether or not I have any cannabis in my system just by hanging out with her. We mm -hmm. thought that would be an interesting thing to look at. But um, I think it's just, it's just, I think communication has been key. And I think people are just mostly shocked about the fact that it's, it's not a peripheral issue. It's her life. It's, it's medicinally what, what keeps her able to function. And by me not taking a part in that, I think it's just surprising to people. And quite honestly, I think it comes down to communication. Well, it's funny you say you're not taking a part in it because he, he is very, like he, you are taking a part in it. He's just not actually consuming it because there are times that I, when working, especially I try and push through um, whatever it is that we're doing. And Timmy is very aware of the fact that I need to, to take that moment to stop and go and consume. Um, and he'll actually say to me, you know, I think, I think you need a minute. And he's most of the time you're right. It's just, it's, it's something that when you communicate, and even if it's something that your partner may not agree with, if you're honest and the other person's compassionate, there should be a way that you can communicate a resolve for like the both of you. I think that it was really powerful hearing how you described communication, both of you describe communication in your relationship, because it really is. I mean, something like baseball, right? That could be a division in a couple, you know, if one person wants to go to games all the time or watch the games and the other yeah. person just has a, you know, just no desire for it whatsoever, that could cause a real riff in a relationship. And so as long as you have that strong communication and ultimately empathy, 
uh, then I think you can work through just about anything. I think that's just a great analogy. Well, one of the, one of the struggles that we we have had, I guess, and mainly, mind you, we've been learning about each other throughout this whole process. But me just understanding that she needs those breaks. Like when I when I plan to do an event as a touring comedian, um, we we get up. Sometimes we're, we're up on the road at five. We're driving to a venue, getting there at one, setting things up. You know, performing at seven, tearing down. You know, on the road at eleven to a hotel, up at five in the morning. We we li- I live in this just you just go world and the concept of of her needing to prepare for even a night out let alone you know a 10-day tour and realizing that she doesn't just need them I guess my mindset previously would have been oh just like don't worry about just smoke it later like you don't need it it's only a three-hour drive just wait till you get there and now that Mm. I've come to realize that she actually needs it like medicinally just like I used to I used to have to take a Tylenol before every show because I would get these neck strains which has been um gone ever since I've taken taken yoga these are yoga shoulders by the way I recommend it for everybody but um, I think that that's been a big struggle for me has just been learning that I need to pace my day a little bit slower. So even on podcast shooting days, we record four episodes currently in one day, um, just due to our, our, our way we can make it work. And in that, you know, we have to put in smoke breaks. And normally I would just pump these things out. And so me adjusting to that, but I think that goes back to what we talked about with communication is that we're constantly being open with the fact of she needs to stop and her trusting that I'm not going to say, Oh, you stoner, like you guys, you know, if you just hmm. the first the first time we had the conversation and he's like trying to plan it out. He said, so like, how how often do you need a break? And I'm like, well, I need one like every hour, hour and a half. He's like, what? (laughs) And then and we talked about it. And and that's why you're like, okay, because we that's the discussion. You need to have the discussion. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Now, tell me about the show. I'm excited to learn. So you have these two different backgrounds. You have these two different individuals. Tell me how you came together and why you decided to put a show together. Well, th- well let's, uh, those, those are sort of two different questions. I want to touch on briefly how we even got together, which, which led to podcasts, because it was completely and utterly happenstance. It's not yeah. like I went to a you know, a pod event or she, you know, um, I was emceeing an event. She was a a 1950s model. It was, it was a charity um, thing that we were doing. We were raising money for a a pet organization in the town that I live in. And um, I had done this, this was my second year in a row. And the first year I did it, um, I kind of like blacked out when I was on stage. I don't know what happened. My son said, what happened up there? I have no idea. I have photos of me posing and smiling, but I don't remember any of it. So um, I was determined to get over my stage fright for the following year, which was the year I ended up meeting Timmy because um, I decided I was going to make up this ruse about carrying these green infused cookies. And I needed a police officer to come and bust me the cookies because I figured if I did that, then I would be focused on the whole gig that I wouldn't be worried about whatever it was that made me black out the year before. Sure. So um, I asked all my friends and of course, none of them wanted to do it. I called the organizer and she said, well, why don't you, why don't you reach out to, to the MC, the host? I said, okay, this guy right here. So I, I met up with him the day of the event and I brought him a badge. Yeah. And, and a pie and a pile of green cookies. And I ended up making, that green cookie gag a, a gag throughout the entire thing oh, she had she, she brought the picture that's us um, with amazing green. um so that was that's actually that's actually the first picture of us we weren't together mm-hmm. but that's the first picture of us meeting that mm-hmm. so we actually have we actually have a a documentation of the first time we actually met each other yeah. um and as you can see it's framed so it, it's a it's special it's, it um, is it's a very great photo but we, uh, but yeah, so I, we played into the cookie thing and I kept eating these cookies and pretending that I was, I was, uh, getting a little, get a little high off. And I was just, as a comedian, I, I, I saw this as a, an incredibly good angle mm-hmm. to, to take this thing with. And from there, we just started to communicate, 
um, online. And it was, it was, I think it was, it was just one of those crazy moments where the differences, um, there was, you know, opposites attract. I don't know, whatever, however you want to I call it energy because I knew from the first time I met him, there was something, something. I think I even told him I could read palms just because I was like, I can read your palm. And he, he put his hand in my hand and no word of a lie. When I said, this is your lifeline, I felt chills, mm-hmm. chills. And I was like, now imagine, imagine also, you know, 30 plus years of conservative Christianity. Not only is she smoking weed, but she's saying, I can read your palm. I'm like, you're, you're absolutely nuts, but she was super cute. So I continued the, the, the coming forward. <laughs> But from that, the podcast flowed fairly naturally um, because we saw right away there was a creative synergy. Um, our, our, our humor is very, very different. I'm more of a dry wit. She's kind of a really kind of uh, wild and crazy. I mean, outfits you, you speak a whole <laughs> lot in this regard. Um, but I can go that route and she can come. My, so we had these kind of these crossover humors. So we created this TikTok. Which has uh, which was launched silently um, and is only now beginning. Like we never told friends or family. It's called Tim and Janice on TikTok. If you want to go check that out, the best way to look it up is just search on TikTok hashtag Team Blue and Yellow. And so we uh, we start we made it secretly though because our relationship was still secret um, due to a whole lot of factors and our um, it would gave us a chance to test our creative how we could work together without any pressure because we could just create these characters without anybody from our friends and fam- my fans didn't know about it. There was no added pressure. It was all supposed to be organic and allow us to see, can we work together? This, this, is that part of our relationship as well? And that, that really did well. Organically, it did incredibly well and encouraged us. We, saw, we were able to test our own working patterns and habits um, how we can film a bunch of videos and get smoke breaks, you know, all those type of things. <laughs> And then from there, it was just like, what else do we do? Like, what what is the thing? And we have so many things we want to talk about. We're both talkers. We both love talking. We could go conspiracy. We would go 1980s. We could, you know, go 90s, down the 90s. 1990s. We, we thought we were going to do an 80s, 90s podcast. <laughs> um, and then we realized that there was this void uh, in the cannabis space where almost from an outsider, all and I haven't heard and seen, I don't even know what your podcast is really about. But though my perception is, is that it seemed like everything we came across was cannabis people talking to cannabis people, talking about things that the cannabis listeners most of the time already know. So questions weren't being asked of guests that seemed like obvious questions. Whereas I realized that I was asking questions that, and she was like going, oh, you know, I, I also look into that again. It's like remind, refreshing kind of as a longtime cannabis user of like, Oh, going back to basics almost and seeing she started to see the value in that. And we realized that, you know, what about what about a show where it literally is from both sides, where a cannabis user is talking to a non cannabis user? And it's not like a, you know, I'm anti and she's pro. We're both going to be pro, but I'm going to be able to ask questions that a cannabis user wouldn't ask another cannabis user. And we've already seen um people who watch our show and we do suggest watching we are on audio as well but um we almost produce what we would say is a tv show that happens to be in a podcast studio so if you can catch it on youtube we would we would suggest that we actually hold the world record for most umbrellas opened in a podcast studio we do we we broke that record a couple times ago (laughs) um so the podcast became this place for us to go that's something that we are both interested in. I'm interested in having the conversation. She's obviously interested in teaching and, and, you know, giving the proper information. And we saw that it was a, it was a void. And we've, I think by the feedback we're getting, we're filling that void. We've had people from both sides, um, cannabis users saying, wow, this is, is entertaining. It's being presented in a different way. Uh, we're really enjoying this. And we've had non-cannabis users watching our show mm-hmm. because they have, they may not use it, but they have kids that use it or they have elderly parents who use it or they're thinking about using it, but are scared because they don't, they don't know. It's the disinformation. All yeah. Those years ago. So it's just, uh, we're really proud. We're really proud of it. We're just trying to be unique and be an us. And I think, I think there's a certain energy that we have that, that seems to work, that people seem to enjoy. And we're talking about a serious issue in a, in a creative, lighthearted, unique way. 
Well, my favorite, uh, my favorite comment that somebody said about us was um, even Ray Charles would see how well we work together. I love that. Well, and I can tell from you two being on here for the audience tuned in now, what is the best way for them to watch your show and to tune in? Well, everything, I think if you, we, if we did it right, um, if you just go at the newbie and the doobie, um, on any, on anything we're, we're there. So YouTube, um, it's the newbie and the doobie. Uh, then we have the podcast as well, which I think you just search it in any of the, um, podcatchers. podcatchers. Uh, Facebook and Instagram is the newbie and the doobie. I think we, we had to change it to Timmy and MJ on TikTok because this is one thing that I've found too. Maybe you guys have in terms of promoting what you do. We had four accounts under the newbie and the doobie all written up different ways and, and trying it's, to think. It's the word doobie. And we were getting, uh, we were getting shadow banned immediately, like, like zero views, like, yeah. like nothing was coming in. I think so now on TikTok, we're just Timmy and MJ yeah. and we're starting to get a little bit on there, but it's amazing to me. Um, something I've learned in this so far doing this podcast is how no wonder there's so much misinformation out there because you're not even allowed to really promote or talk about it in the online space. Um, Something that's legal yeah. in our own country. So yeah. that bothers me as an entertainer and as someone who wants to talk about it when I discovered how hard it was for us to get a TikTok account with the newbie and the doobie name attached to it. It is. I remember when we first started with Instagram, we had like three accounts banned within the first week. So yeah. it's uh, it's been a challenge and I am just so grateful to both of you for joining Weed Buds Radio. I'm excited to tune in to more of the newbie and the doobie available everywhere and yep. on YouTube as well, right? YouTube, yes. yeah, YouTube, we would recommend it. You can listen to it on your earphones going for a jog and we think it's still funny and entertaining and informational. I call it edutainment. I'm sure maybe you've, you've heard that word, but um, like I said, for, for the full experience, you're we, not you're not gonna see this. Yeah, not we, gonna see we, the giraffe. We no. had we had towel day where we both were, we 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 were in towels the entire Actually, day. Actually, we had Jackie Childs on on towel day and she joined in. Yeah. That was great. So That's there's things amazing. that you there's things that you can't see through your ears. Well, I <laughs> hope everyone will go onto YouTube, check us out, check out the newbie and the doobie. I'm so grateful to all of you for tuning in and be sure to head over to our show notes on weedbudsradio.com. And that way, all of the links to connect with Timmy and Mary Jane will be there. I thank you both so much again for joining me. Thank no, thank you, you so much, Ryan. We really appreciate it. We will see you all in the next episode.